It's Baltimore City uh, Budget and Appropriations Committee. Uh, we're going to get started. We are here for Baltimore, uh, or the Bureau of Budget and Management Research, BBMR. I'm joined to my left by uh, Vice Chair of the Committee, Councilman Leon Pinkett from the 7th District. To his left, Councilman Isaac Yitzi Schleifer from the 5th District, member of the committee. Uh, Councilwoman Shan Sneed, 13th District, member of the committee. To my right, Vice President of the Council, Sharon Green Middleton, 6th District, member of the committee. To her right, Councilman Robert Stokes, 12th District. And to his right, Councilman Bill Henry, 4th District, member of the committee. And City Council President uh, Bernard C. Jack Young. Um, <clears throat> before we get started, uh, Bob, um, I need to um, run in about five minutes to a meeting with the administration on the, on the budget negotiations. I just want to make an overarching uh, comment. Um, the budget process last year uh, was extremely rough. Uh, I'm thankful that, uh, for the partnership with the mayor and the administration. We were able to get a deal done. Um, I, it has been, um, uh, I've been very optimistic working with you and BBMR. And, oh, we're not done yet, that's right. Um, <clears throat> but I, it, it's been a pleasure to work with um, you and Caroline. And uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing that partnership. And I really do appreciate um, the responsiveness and uh, what I believe is, is a, a great level of respect that you've demonstrated toward the, the council and to the committee in taking our requests seriously um, and, and viewing them as being responsible requests. So I really do appreciate it, and I hope that we can continue this, this working relationship in, in this manner moving forward. Uh, so thank you guys for that. Now with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Vice Chair Pinkett. Uh, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, Bob, if you wanna proceed. Sure, sure, okay. well go ahead. Uh, good evening, my name is Bob Senemi, Budget Director. I'm uh, the Director of the what we call the Bureau of Budget Management Research, which is a division within the Department of Finance. Um, it's a, a small shop, but we, uh, a primary role, of course, is developing and overseeing uh, the city's $2.8 billion operating budget. And so first, before I, uh, before I go into a little bit more detail in our presentation, just wanted to quickly uh, introduce our our management team. So first, uh, Caroline Sturgis is uh, our deputy director. Uh, Pedro Aponte, if you could just wave, he's our director of revenue and long-term financial planning. And then Daniel Ramos, who's uh, relatively new with us, he's our budget operations director. He's in charge of our data and systems. Uh, we have a ton of data that comes through our systems, tens of thousands of budget line items, uh, hundreds of performance measures, and thousands of city positions, and our office is responsible for keeping all of that stuff together and tracked so that we can put it in a format that you can review. Um, so we're grateful for his, his leadership too so far in his short time with us. Um, our, like I said, our role is, is pretty simple. We oversee, uh, develop and oversee the city's $2.8 billion operating budget. We also develop uh, what we call the city's 10-year financial plan, which is a, a longer-term look of what the city's finances look like. We also provide um, analysis and research on a variety of fiscal, operational, and management issues. We do that for the mayor, and we also, of course, report on the fiscal impact of any city council legislation that is proposed. Um, our role is pretty constant throughout the year. Um, you know, our planning process takes almost a full year. In the summer, we're developing a baseline forecast. In the fall, we're we're engaging with uh, agencies uh, for their budget proposals. In the winter is decision-making time. And then in the spring, of course, is the public phase of the process where we present the budget to the public and to the city council. Um, I want to just highlight a couple of our performance measures. Um, one, you'll see the second one, revenue forecast accuracy. Our, when we build the budget, we have to make a determination of what the revenue streams will be for the city in the next fiscal year. Our target for that is 2%. Um, 2% of a $1.8 billion general fund operating budget is about $36 million. So even if we're within a very small margin of error, we can be well below or well above budget in a pure dollar term. So I just wanted to call attention to that. We've been pretty good. We've been right around the 2% margin for a few years. It's always better to come in 2% above than it is 2% below, which is why we're uh, conservative in our, our projections, admittedly. Um, but that's one of our key, key benchmarks. Another thing that's in the book not mentioned here is we've been trying to do a much better job of engaging with citizens and getting them involved in the budget planning process. Part of that is just purely educational. There's a lot of citizens that we'll do workshops with that you know, just don't know much about where the city's money, money comes from or how it's spent. 
Um, we've done events with uh, some council members, including actually one here, Councilman Henry in his district, um, and informational and getting their engagement in the process. And so we look to continue to do that next year. Our goal is to engage uh, 3,000 citizens in the process, either, either through the taxpayer night, doing community-based um, uh, workshops with citizens or anything else that the council members would ask us to do. So I would just open that opportunity if any, any folks here, uh, members, would like us to come to a community meeting in their district, we'd be happy to do that to just share a little bit about the budget and also ask for citizens' input on their priorities. Um, our goals for this year are simple, to have a good, smooth uh, budget process that keeps us on a fiscally sustainable path, and we are uh, in the process of refreshing our long-term 10-year financial plan. Um, to, we were five years through the original 10-year financial plan, and we'd like to look at that again on a rolling 10-year basis for fiscal 2019 through fiscal 2028. Um, so that's the basics for us. I'd be happy to take uh, any questions from, the, from council members. Thank you, Bob. Council President. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm looking at the salaries and wages for permanent full-time funded positions. And um, I see a lot of large salaries, but when you come down to where some of the people who actually are doing most of the work, I'm not saying that you guys are not doing the work, nobody should be making $29,834 nobody or 39 uh, 197 when I'm looking at 118 91 103 84 77 69 87 so it tells me that those folk who are making the least amount of money are the ones who actually live in the city of Baltimore because that's been um, throughout each agency that I've noticed that and we have to do we have to do better than that um, our, our, our workers who actually live in this city should be paid a decent salary. Y'all finance. Nobody in that office should be making under $50,000. Which page are you looking at? 125. Oh, 125. I'm, I'm trying to go through and look and see what else y'all got. So that, um, uh, just, just a, well, page 125 is the Office of Risk Management. It still falls under finance. It falls under finance. Okay. Not, not my purview, but it is in Department of Finance. Yeah, but those, those salaries are, are way too low. Um, we have risk management coming back. Um, that, that would be, um, I'm not sure. Yeah, that was on, tu that was on Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. We're not looking. Okay, well, we'll send something to them. Okay. But um, on page um, 90, no, is that page 90? Yeah, page 90. While I was looking at that, I lost my page. Actually, it would be um, yes, probably one, oh, yeah. 126 yeah. to 128. Which one are you looking for? Um, this one here. You need this. You got it. <clears throat> All right. Give me one minute. All my stuff is all mixed up over here. Okay. What would you do without me? I don't know what I would do without you. <laughs> well, I would need to. I hope that's recorded. <laughs> okay. In uh, operating budget um, 708. Right. Okay. Um, the performance metrics show that no money has been saved for management research projects in FY16 or 17. There is a target of two point. I would say $2 million in FY18 and FY19. Why were there no savings in fiscal year 16 and 17? Sure. So our, um, we have one uh, staff person who's dedicated to doing um, what we would call larger scale operational research management, what we call management research projects. Mm -hmm. um, in the, the prior years, we had done reports that uh, actually led to recommendations that save the city money. We've also um, done some research projects that look at um, ways to make agencies more efficient, to actually free up more resources to do more of what they do. Um, and in 16 and 17 in particular, we did a, uh, a report on inspections throughout the city and another one on senior services. 
services that are shared by a lot of agencies, mostly health and rec and parks, to try to encourage them to see if they could find shared efficiency. So there was no dollars saved from those particular reports, but our general target is that our work in that area should be leading to recommendations that we can take to uh, the mayor, ultimately to the council in the budget process that will save, save money. Okay. Can I dovetail on it? So, but did we experience actual financial savings in previous years? I, I, I know you have the book. So, it, yeah, so that's a, that's, a, that's a great question. We, it's um, one of the recommendations, the way we've judged it is if it makes it into the budget, we count it as a savings. Now, whether we ultimately get the savings later, we have to go back and measure. But our, our measure for ourselves is if we have a recommendation that's strong enough that it passes muster with you know, the mayor administration and passes the council and it made it into the budget, then we count that as a savings. We still have to go back and track and monitor and make sure that we ultimately get those savings mm -hmm. down the road. So there are, you know, there are some things that we'll, re that we'll recommend that we'll bring to the mayor that never make it into the budget that she'll say no. Okay. Uh, we don't want to do that. We don't count those, just ones that make it into the budget. And, and, and with those types of rec recommendations, it, and I'm just assuming that, well, I'm already about to answer my own question, but those recommendations are made strictly to the mayor, and um, there there is no other vetting process of those recommendations. So they're they're first made to the mayor, um, and I, I'd be happy to send a link to you or share with okay. you all the reports we've done. Some that some of them go back um, many I, I years. I think that would be beneficial to the uh, council to to. I, because I think sometimes we make an assumption, and we don't want to make an improper assumption of, of your agency that you, you possibly aren't making certain recommendations as it relates right. to the budget. Sure. But if we aren't privy to the fact that you, that you are developing reports right. um, that make certain recommendations, then, then either we're, we're forced to either come up with those recommendations on our own without having the, the same um, maybe technical um, um, uh, uh, technical guidance that your office provides sure. but then um, we, we might support some of those recommendations sure. yeah I'd be happy to share a list of the ones and actually the reports I mean some of them are okay. 80 to 100 pages long a lot of great detail but I'd be happy to share those we do have um, you know we 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 have we share with um, with the mayor with the administration what we would call our research agenda for the year so we don't just go off and just look at anything we try to make sure that are things that that they're interested in looking at um, efficiency so that we don't we don't write reports that just sit on it sit on a shelf somewhere so there is a little bit of give and take we look for things that we can um, that we think will lead to savings that are able to be implemented and we bring that to them in the summer okay our agenda and some of that comes out of the budget process we might learn things from agencies or from the council we say yeah we should take a second look at that okay. um, and then so we I, I know that this committee as well as the council would be interested in, in those documents and sure. so I know the council council Absolutely. president sure. Sure council thing. president has a, another question yeah um, Still on page uh, 126, mm -hmm. um, where it, it talks about the number of residents engaged, the, the number of residents engaged in annual budgeting planning process. Sure. Okay. Um, the, you, you're showing 308, and then in FY18, you're projecting 2,835, and then in fiscal 19, 3,000. Yep. Uh, can you explain how this? Is calculated sure so we've um, we're trying to use more online um, engagement so what we had done for years was we had done these very small um, workshops in, in at, at community meetings in different neighborhoods and we still think that is one part of the engagement like I said we did one recently um, in councilman Henry's district I'm happy to do that for other other council folks, but those we found we just only touched with a few people. There tends to be a very active group that comes to those meetings. It might only be 20 or 30 people. So we've been looking at ways that we can expand and use online tools. Mm -hmm. um, and not sure exactly what that will be look like, but we're testing an online simulation where you can let uh, folks online go immediately on an app or on the web and um, give feedback directly about different choices in the budget. Would you prefer more or less of this service? Would you prefer a higher taxes or lower taxes? And trying to put those together and getting real time results. So if we do that, we'll be able to touch more people. It's a little, little bit less personal, but it's just another avenue by which we can get citizens engaged in the process. So. Um, My two, I'll okay. come back. You can ask as many as you want. All right. I don't want you to do the same thing. Don't worry, I'm the chair. Okay. Um, staying on page 708, 
Uh, many of the, of the performance metrics used in the budget books are not accompanied by explanation of the metrics. Uh, for public accountability and transparency, do you believe explanation of the matrix of the metrics should be included in the budget books? Yeah, so what we've, um, you know, frankly, just for space and time limitations, we've asked agencies to, you know, list the history of their performance measures going back four years. Um, we do put notes under the performance measures if there's something that we feel like is not clear or there's something that has changed significantly. <coughs> so you'll notice that sprinkled throughout the book that we'll have one or two bullets about measures that we try to describe in more detail. Um, but yeah, we've chosen just for time constraints. We can't explain every single one. That's why we ask the agencies to come in here and be accountable and present and explain uh, to the council on those measures. I should say, I should say, if you go back, I was looking at budget books from even five or six years ago. We used to publish no performance information. So we're trying to cram a lot of information, I think for good reason, so that there's some level of accountability that the council can look to um, as they review the budget. But um, y'all, the finance department, y'all should make them do it. So um, we, we want you to have them, we want you to include those explanations in the future budget books um, because it's important for this council to actually know what's going on with that. Okay. Um, what's the next one? Oh. The fiscal 2019 recommended budget includes funding a new analyst position. Yes, that's right. That will focus on revenue generation and cost saving. Um, can you provide examples of potential revenue or cost saving initiatives that this individual might research? Yeah, you sure. have to excuse me because my bronchitis is acting up and it's messing with my speech. Okay. Sure. So, um, so uh, we're, like I mentioned before, we're planning to uh, do what we would call a refresh of the 10-year financial plan. We do a, we do a rolling 10-year forecast um, each fall. So this fall we'll do a forecast of fiscal 2019 as the baseline through fiscal 2028. That gives us a picture of what the long-term uh, financial picture looks like for the cities and allows us to prepare um, in advance. Um, what we need or what we want the analysts to do is start developing options for us. On the revenue side, it could be a variety of things. It could be going after um, revenues that are out there now that we're just not doing a good enough job of capturing. It could be new fees or taxes. You heard the, the fire uh, chief here a, a moment ago talk about EMS fees. That was one that we worked together with them to raise the fees just to keep it up with the rate of inflation. Um, it could be taking a smarter look at our tax credits too. We might have tax credits where we're giving out money um, that is not really doing the purpose that it was intended to do. Um, on, the, on, the, on the expenditure side, it could be operational specific uh, efficiencies. It could be looking at healthcare and pensions. I mean, we always need to take a strong close look at those and so we plan to have that analyst very heavily involved in that that work okay well we'd be interested in uh, what cost saving initiative that they have okay. and any revenue generated from that um, position okay yeah because um, cool. uh, like I said before I think um, we need to have a certified accountant that has some analyst um, experience so that when the audits are done everything is correct right okay it should be somebody um, that's one position y'all should be looking at Okay. We don't mind uh, y'all doing that one. Councilman Henry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Good, good, good afternoon. Hi. Um, so I really just have one question, which is, um, and it kind of follows up on one of the things, the issues the president had raised about the metrics that are shown um, for each, uh, for each service. How would you feel about working with the president's office and this committee to determine which metrics you're going to put in the next year's budget book for each agency? So I, I would I would love to get feedback. Um, we keep in mind too that the city stat is now we're, we're uh, let me give you a little history of how this evolved. Years ago, um, even when city stat was here going back all the way to the O'Malley days they measured a lot of things we didn't publish any in the book and a lot of their measures were very like week to week um, you know how many potholes did you fix in a week and those were important when when we started doing uh, when we started revising our budget process we wanted to look at longer term things like outcomes what are we ultimately trying to get to so we developed a lot of those measures uh, we worked as best we could with the agency um, 
you know, over time, CityStat had kind of fallen off for a while. Now they've got, I think, very strong leadership. They're back. They're going through with all the agencies and reviewing each of their performance measures. So I plan, I mean, we plan to take the feedback that we've gotten through these hearings and, you know, turn that over to CityStat um, and let them know what the, you know, what the feedback is on the measures. Um, if there's a way to incorporate that, we would love to hear that. I, I, I think that sounds great. What I guess I'm suggesting is maybe close that loop a little bit. So you're going to take the feedback that you're getting from these hearings. Mm -hmm. You're going to go off and talk with CityStat and the agencies about it. What I'm suggesting is rather than, than just we see how it turns out next year, um, why don't you come back to us like later in the fall, very early in the winter, you know, but, but it, when there's clearly still time to make changes, come back and say, this is what we've come up with tentatively for the FY, oh my God, 20 <laughs> budget books. Yeah. This is what we've come up with and so, give us a chance to you know, respond to that and give you some more feedback. Okay, I'll, I'll talk to CitySat about that. I mean, there's hundreds of measures, so there would have to be a way, you know, there could be an instance when, where if a person has a, a policy interest in a particular agency or just a few services, I mean, to have every council person involved in every measure, I think would be unwieldy. I, that's, that's be. yeah, that's, well, A, that's why we have committees. Right, okay. yeah. Um, and, and, and B, you, you're, you're basically, I mean, you're, you're doing all of this work no matter what. What I was just suggesting is that it sounds like it would be physically possible to show us what you're going to do well before these actually get printed. Yes. And that would be at a point where we could say, well, this is nice, but you know, nobody is asking any questions about this metric. Right. And that's the metric that the agency seems to want to show, possibly because it's a metric that is, makes the agency look like it's doing well. Yeah. Here's the metric that really bugs people. Right. Why don't you put that in the book and see if that helps motivate them to do a better job with that metric? Okay. That's I, can tell, I can tell you for sure that that feedback does come from us in city stat. Sometimes an agency will put something, we'll say, look, that's not really what somebody wants to see. Right. But if Marguerite, if you could put that as a follow up for us, we could talk to city stat about can, ways. If I can dovetail off of. Um, um, Councilman Henry, and I'm glad that you, you brought that up. I mean, this is only my second you know, budget cycle, but um, w one, and I'm not trying to say that I know all of the metrics that should be measured, but um, in many instances, the, the metrics that are being presented to us suggest, I'm just like, why, why are you even <laughs> judging yourself based on, this doesn't even, if you achieve it, it doesn't even make your agency that more efficient. Mm -hmm. And then I, I know that we have a council that, you know, enjoys asking questions, but part of the reason we're asking questions are because the metrics don't match up with, you know, what we're hearing from constituents that is, that's important. So we probably would have, I'm not saying we would have fewer questions, but our questions would be more guided by the budget book if, if those metrics lined up with what we're hearing and what we feel like is really important to the constituents. So okay. I, I didn't mean to interject, but. No, and, well, the only other thing I was going to say is I wanted to just agree that the budget presentation that you and your team did for my district-wide community meeting was outstanding. I definitely encourage uh, all of my colleagues to take advantage of that. Having now seen how it works, when you get to the point where you feel like you can go live with the online part, I think that that presentation would actually lend itself very well to a Facebook Live kind of sure. thing sure. so that even people who couldn't come in person to participate if they're home, they could still play along play with along, the budget right. game. And that's the idea. That's why we have more. We think we can engage more yeah. next year. Thank you. So either Bob or Councilman Henry, can you restate um, what the follow up is? so that Marguerite can make certain she gets that down. The, the, the way I'm seeing it is if, if, the, if BBMR uh, could loop back with the Budget Appropriations Committee sometime mid-budget cycle, so I guess that would be in the December-January time frame, to show us the draft metrics that you're looking at 
okay. for the different agencies and get an additional round of specific feedback for where you're going. And, and so if I can add to that, I think Bob was highlighting a step prior to that where you would engage CityStat to? Yeah, I would, I would also, CityStat's man, leading okay. the process. We publish the okay. ones that are pulled yeah. out in they're, the book. They're going to do that no matter what. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, That's good. Thank you. And I, I'm sorry, say it again. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I just had one last question, mm -hmm. and, um, and maybe it's n not, um, n not for you, Bob, but you can tell me. Sure. Um, would BBMR be responsible for, I guess, doing a, an analysis or monitoring um, the grants that we receive as the city and grants. where, you know, uh, where we are as it relates to, um, you know, fully utilizing the grants, the accounting of the grants, um, if we're coming to the end of a grant cycle, mm -hmm. you know, for activity that um, the city is dependent upon, so we we can project that now this is going to become a part of a general fund expense as opposed to, um, I, I think that's critical because, you know, some of these services that are, as I said, critical to the city are being funded by grants. Mm -hmm. And the hope is that when that grant ends, you know, that the activity isn't going to end. So we need to be preparing for how we're going to fund these activities after, you know, the, the sure. state or federal grants. Are, sure. Are so um, going back to the management research reports that okay. we were talking about. One of the ones that was written years ago was an analysis of the city's overall grant position, which first highlighted it as an issue. Actually, it was Caroline who did most of the work on that when she was an analyst. So so we had done some of the research. The What was created, BBMAR has a role in the grants process. I would call it somewhat limited. During the budget planning process, we reach out to agencies and they put appropriation in the budget if they expect to get a grant. Mm -hmm. Now, for some agencies, that's pretty simple because they get the same, you know, like CDBG, they get it every year, it's in the right spot in the budget. Other agencies, I would say maybe health as an example, things kind of come and go, so it takes a lot of work for them to get the right amounts in the budget and they come in and out. Um, our role in that is helping to put that into the budget. Um, once the grant is applied for and once the uh, grant is accepted in the monitoring of the grant and the tracking, there's a the unit within the director's <coughs> office in finance um, that's res that's responsible for coordinating those, and then there's work, of course, that goes on in the agency. The agency has fiscal staff that's supposed to be monitoring the grant. So the the unit in the finance department is supposed to be setting the policies and overseeing the process, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of work that's going on in the agencies, of course, to follow those processes and make sure that they report it. It's still, frankly, a big concern. Um, I think it's you've seen it come yeah. out a couple times at like board of estimates meetings. It's still a concern for finance. Um, are we've you know stuck our nose in where we need to? We have. Um, we have a role to play of, of doing that, but the, the, the function is largely with that unit and with the agency fiscal staff. Okay. Um, yeah. once again, I'd love to see that recommendation. I mean, in, sure. I'll, we'll show you the report yeah. that we did when we send the list from years ago. Um, and, oh, Councilman Stokes. Um, I just, uh, more of a, are we working with departments to maximize budget and service efficiencies? I'm sorry for budget what? Are you working with department heads to maximize budget and service efficiencies? We, we do. Um, we, there are a lot of, I would say, issues that come up throughout the year where we work with departments on ways that they can be more efficient. Um, I think the, the fire department example that we just talked to, the EMS fees, I mean, we sat down with them and said, look, both sides acknowledged that that, that had not been adjusted in years, um, and we collectively agreed to raise that rate and put it into the budget. Um, we do work together with agencies if we collectively agree that there's something that could be more efficient in the budget. Uh, frankly, sometimes BBMR has to go right to the mayor and say, we think that agency A can be more efficient and here's what we think they can do and put it into the budget and impose that. Our, our, our preference is to work with the agency on it, but there's some agencies that are easier, <laughs> well, of course, to work on than others. But we do that all the time. Our analysts are assigned, each of our analysts, we have six expenditure analysts, they're each assigned to a portfolio of agencies, and a lot of their work is not just the day-to-day, -day, but trying to figure out ways that they can make their agencies more, more efficient. But uh, are you able to talk to departments about what, is actually, what actually costs them to provide the service? Yes. Is that the same thing you just said? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. We, and my, I, sorry, sorry, go ahead. My last one, are you tracking overtime for large operating departments, police department, fire department, DOT? We, just a real budget buster and, and the real effect. Like effect 
effect real cost of doing business because so they we those four agencies really overtime probably has been a problem and that really puts a lot of weight on the budget yeah it's um it's a huge problem uh, i mean we all know it we track we we see we watch police and fire especially very closely we get a report from the from police department i think it's weekly we get or, or yeah bi-weekly um showing us the trends um what we'll hear from police i think tomorrow is that one of the challenges with overtime is the schedule, the patrol schedule we have is is limiting in a, in a degree um, in that they have to require, they have to call officers back on, on overtime to work normal shifts. There's also a cultural issue for sure in the department where there's abuse. Um, you know, we saw that play out over the last couple months and I think they have uh, ways they can use technology to get more efficient in overtime. So we look at the reports every week, we make a lot of suggestions. Um, Ultimately, the department has to take that accountability, though. And Mr. Favor. Chair, is there any way we can get a request on their overtime? How they? Um, yeah, if you don't mind, if you can restate that request so that Marguerite um, could could. Are we tracking the overtime for our large operating departments like police, fire department, and DPW and DOT? Yeah. Huh? So you got it. It's the, so request, the request he is, said. He, the request he. I'm asking a request because that's the. Thing that's killing the budget. All that yeah, we time. could we could I show a submit response on how y'all uh, yeah, tracking we could, that overtime. We could show an example of like a p police. It's broken down by by you know patrol district and by unit of what we see and what so we track. You, so you can get it from the other departments mm -hmm. also. Sure. Okay. Can we have any yes, questions? Yes, we, we, okay. we can do that. For for the last three years, for the last three last fiscal three years. Last three fiscal years. Okay. Um, but I just it was. Any, I just had one other question. There's there's been a lot of discussion, even through the, this budget, um, these budget hearings about equity, um, and and um, you know many people will define depending on who you ask, it'll be defined differently, um, and, and and much of the discussion has been um, independently looking at agency to agency and how they. Um, um, deal or address equity within their individual agencies. Um, I guess my question to you: um, Would it be best? Would it be better placed, you know, to look at equity, you know, as it relates to the, the budget, you know, department, looking overall um, at equity, and then possibly setting up some parameters for each agency. Um, not not taking away, not taking away the responsibility from the individual agencies, but almost as a backstop to evaluate <laughs> to to evaluate if the the, the <coughs> individual agencies are, are achieving those goals. And then, are there any other municipalities um, where the the budget departments are or agencies are are, are um, taking an active role in making certain that their budgets, you know. You know, reflect that equity and played out through their agencies. So, um, to answer your question and, and what Councilman Scott has asked, we don't have you know one particular person devoted to it. We do. Um, we have an interest in it. We have uh, an intern coming in this summer, and we plan to have them look at how we can incorporate that in the budget process. Um, we had one of our analysts also. We did a peer exchange with Seattle. They have what they call the. Uh, racial equity toolkit mm -hmm. of ways that you know questions that should be asked on every um, policy or budget decision or things that the city does uh, and it really a lot of it is just training people to think of it in that mm -hmm. in that way because today in some cases it's not being thought of mm -hmm. I think that could play I think that could play into um, I'm not sure exactly how but I think it could play into the budget process right. I mean, you could look at uh, again I'm just talking off the cuff here you could look at existing programs and say is this an equitable program? Mm -hmm. um, are there existing programs that are widening inequality? Or are there other ones that are limiting uh, inequality? So there's ways that we could look at it. I'm not sure what that will exactly look like in our budget process, but I, I want our intern to do the research okay. and, then, and then make recommendations. The capital, I know you've heard probably a yes. little bit about the capital. <laughs> capital from a budget standpoint is easier in some ways because there's projects. Right, that you can map out and say this project went in this particular district or this neighborhood. Operating budget covers everything. So we'd have to do probably a little bit of a deeper dive to kind of see how service requests are answered or how frequently in different parts of the city. That might be one way to look at it or it might be when we make budget decisions to 
to figure out how we look through that lens. And, and, so, and, and I think you're right. And I think part of the reason I was asking, you know, for it to be housed in the budget is because um, and you mentioned capital, you know, a, a capital expense, capital expenses aren't equal depending on what neighborhood you put in. So I could, I could right. make, you know, a $5 million investment in one neighborhood and it could be deferred maintenance essentially and right. not anything that really propels, you know, community yeah. and economic development in that community where um, it, it really, really needed a $15 million investment. And mm -hmm. so I, I would hate for us to, to be, pushing towards equity and then not really understand, you know, what an equitable investment really looks like. Right. right. Mr. Vice Chair, really quick, no, who was no, the, no, just which staff person went? Oh, okay. It was, I don't know if you know Mira. Yeah, okay. Mira Green, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Councilwoman Middleton. I just wanted, you just made me think of something, just, uh, I just want to ask. Um, well, you know my pitch here with apprenticeship and job creation, and I think some of the fear with the agencies, be, the, the way the structure is set up for apprenticeship, it's uh, and the classroom hours, and then you also, it's a paid experience. So I guess the, the part of the fear is probably trying to figure out how do they incorporate the stages of pay for this apprentice, just getting into that whole scenario of, um, you know, the requirements for apprenticeship, if that, is something that could be developed that they could see. I think that the agency would probably click in real quick. It just, you know, it's, um, and maybe looking at, since water and wastewater has a bona fide program that has been going on forever, trying to maybe capture what they follow in their structure of uh, actual apprenticeship program and sharing that Okay. with some of these other agencies because they right. seem to have something some of them seem to have something uh, <coughs> targeted and in the making but they don't have any idea of how to put that format together to make it a bona fide apprenticeship right i don't know if you can research to set a page or something like that up to show <coughs> uh, show the uh the committee yeah i think once we once we go back and study it this this summer about how it could be incorporated in the budget process, I mean that could that would certainly be one component of it. I mean it really depends, I guess, how you define is it is it employee specific? Is it you know city specific? Like there's there's many ways you can look at it. And I know Mike Alexander has been around a long time because he's the, the main apprenticeship connect. Mm -hmm. He <clears throat> might want to have a conversation with him. Okay. Yeah, can, what, what's the name again? It's Michael. His name is Michael Alexander, and I think he's with, um, you know, the Mayor's Office of Employment Development. Okay. okay. Um, Council President, with the last question. Uh, thank you. Um, the, the performance metrics show that no money has been saved for management research project in FY16 or 17, and you have a target for $2 million in FY18 and 19. Why were there no savings in fiscal yeah. 16 and 17? Th those were the two uh, reports, that, and we'll, we'll send you these. There was one on inspections, overall city inspections, inspectors, and uh, senior services, any, any uh, efficiencies that could be gained between rec and parks and health. Those didn't have um, budgetary savings, but they were recommendations that made uh, those operations more efficient where they were able to do more within their existing resources. So we, could, we couldn't say that we actually saved dollars from those, but both of those recommendations uh, we think created efficiencies within those departments. But wouldn't you be looking for savings there? Uh, we're always looking for savings. Some of our reports, it just depends on the report uh, that we're doing. Like I was mentioning before, we, we send our agenda, we walk the, the mayor and her team through the agenda to make sure it's something that they're um, interested in so that we just don't do a report and then have it sit on a shelf somewhere. So in those particular years, they happened to, they wanted to look at those particular services. In other years, we've looked at things that do have a financial impact. Right now, one that's in the, that will likely end up being a report is um, waste disposal in the, our future of the landfill, because we're entering a, That'll a be period. be FY18? Uh, that will be an FY19. Yeah. Right. Because we're ending the, we're coming to the end of the useful life of the landfill. It might need to be expanded. There might be things we can do to make it more efficient. So we're working with uh, Public Works on that one. So that might be one that ha does have actual significant savings recommendations. Uh, okay. Now, um, you, you said that y'all show this to the mayor. 
um, we, before we, you do anything. So all I'm asking is that if you show it to the mayor, please come and show it to me and my council. Sure, we can so do we that. So we can be a part of that. We're happy so to do we that. can know what's going on. Sure. Um, being that, uh, no further questions. Thank you, Bob, and your team for you know continuing to um, um, lead us through this budget process um, and your leadership in doing so. Um, this committee will be recessed until 6:30 when we'll have the Baltimore City Public School System. Thank you. Thank you.